G'day guys, I'm out here on Sydney Harbour again today. Uh, it's been a while since I've been out chasing brim. Um, it's the middle of September now and uh, we've had a bit of good rain in the last little while and I'm hoping that uh, some of the brim will have moved back up into the harbour and uh, will be around and catchable. So let's see how we go today. I've seen some local reports recently of brim being caught up the river on some of the flats, so I know there are fish around. What I want to do today primarily is to cover quite a bit of different water up and down the harbour and try to find where the best numbers and quality of fish might be. The brim don't move up or down the harbour as one giant monolithic school of fish. They'll be spread throughout the harbour from the top of the river to the heads. But you will find better concentrations of fish in particular areas. Move a little bit down the harbour and try down there. Um, and if that's no good I'm planning to head up the harbour later on. Looked like there was some bait working further up the harbour, so we'll go and have a look downstream first. Covering a lot of spots and moving around a lot helps to establish these patterns. So I try not to spend too long in one place, unless it's really firing. If there's a brim home, you usually find out about it within a couple of decent casts. So don't waste time flogging dead water, keep moving. Down in these middle stretches of the harbour, the water's a lot more oceanic in colour and clarity. There are plenty of birds around, and there seems to be some bait activity. That's usually a promising sign. In this deeper, clearer section of the harbour, it tends to be all about targeting structure. There's no point trying to blindly cover water here. Get the fly right in as close as you can, and the rewards will come. This is a good win. Look at him, guys. This is why I brim fish around Sydney. How good is that? That is a cracker of a yellow fin. He was right up against the bridge pile on there, and uh, by God, he nearly got me back in there a few times. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. All right, let's get a measurement on here. He is uh, 37 and a half, 37.5. That's a pretty good brim. Um, there is bigger ones in here, but by the time they get to this size, by God, they give you a good fight. They really go hard. Uh, this is why I, I bumped up to eight pound leader lately, because on six pound, I don't think I would have got that guy out of there. He would have bricked you for sure, or popped the leader. Anyway, let's get this fish back in the water. All right. Get a release on this guy. <sighs> Whew, what a cracking fish. Oh, I love this. It's so much fun. So much fun pulling him out of that stuff. Alright, let's have another go. See if we can get one more. There's a fair bit of current flowing through a narrowish gap at this particular point, and wherever there's good current and good structure, you're a good chance at catching a brim. It can be hard to fish though, and to be honest, I've had limited success around bridges generally with fly gear. The challenge can be getting the fly down deep enough when the current is moving, but every now and again you find the sweet spot, enough current to get the fish active, but not so much that it's unfishable on fly. Pretty challenging place to fish here. 
Couldn't have a smile on to see how I go. There's just so much submerged timber here, as well as the exposed timber above the water. It's not an easy place to get a fly into, and even harder to get a fly out of. This can be a busy boating channel at times too, so you have to keep an eye out and stay well out of the way of boats here. Not an easy spot, but certainly an interesting and fishy one. A lot of these spots with overhead cover are great brim territory, but the higher the tide gets, the smaller the gap that you can cast a fly into. At some of them, if the tide gets too low, there's not enough good water under them, so the middle tides tend to provide the best fishing around this kind of structure. Despite my initial success on the bridge, this bay is feeling a bit quiet today. There are a few fish about, and I have seen a couple of good brim, but not in the numbers that I'd normally expect to find. It's a little bit quiet in this stretch of the harbour. Um, there's a few fish about, but not a great deal. And they're not overly active. So I'm going to try one more spot. It's just sort of uh, down the other end of the bay. And then um, I might head back up the river, I think. A lure or fly retriever pole is a pretty handy thing to have if you're going to do much of this style of fishing. It can save you from having to manoeuvre the boat into all kinds of ridiculous places and can save you from a broken rod tip as well if you're using the rod to push the fly off snags. I suspect it'll end up being a worthwhile investment. Pretty soon I was hooked up to another brim under here. A decent fish, though not as big as the last one. This guy went for the quick release from the brag mat mounted on the gunnel of the boat. section. We've got two brim from this area but it's a little quiet so I think we'll go and try up the river. Try a bit of natural structure. We should have had high tide now so I might be able to get uh, the tide running out along the snags and mangrove edges. Go and get that a look. I stopped on the way to try a promising looking spot that I hadn't fished before. There's just so much of this type of brim structure in the harbour. I've probably only fished a very small percentage of it, so I like to try new spots as often as I can. One of the great things about brim fishing is that there's just so much water. It doesn't matter if there's a hundred other boats on the water chasing brim, there's plenty of fish and plenty of water for everyone to cover. Ha <laughs> 
Well, it's funny as Tyler. Here we go. Fairly bigger than the fly. Well, I've come right back up the river to the mangroves now. Um, we've just had high tide. Tide should be dropping now, and I'm hoping that just as the tide starts to fall out of these mangroves, we might pick up a few brim around the edges, waiting on the edge and on the drop off for uh, the little shrimp and bait fish and so on to come off. Mangroves and natural structure like this tends to hold a lot of food. It's hard to fish here right on the high tide, but when the tide starts to fall off the mangroves, then the brim and other predators will hunt along the edges, waiting for little prawns or bait fish or other food to come out of the high water. A bit of shade from the trees helps to give the fish a bit of overhead cover and a sense of security from predators. Not a bad place to cast your fly, but there's always a high chance of catching your fly in a tree or snagging up on a submerged branch. It just goes with the territory. This style of brim fishing is very similar to targeting mangrove jacks or barra up north, just scaled down a bit. But it still requires all of the same skills, and it's pretty fun when you hook into a good brim on appropriately sized tackle. They're certainly capable of bricking you in a hurry if you give them half a chance. Another little yellow fin brim. Not particularly big, this guy is only uh, probably, oh, just, just over 30 centimetres, so he's not too bad. Um, but yeah, he didn't really go very hard, that guy, for some reason. He was, seemed uh, a little bit unsure that he was hooked. Anyway, that's one. It's a good start. I was starting to see a few subtle little showers of tiny bait along the edges. Usually a good sign that there are predators of some kind around. It's always worth casting at any kind of bait that you see moving. Any bait skipping around in the mangroves? A little micro bait. It appears like something's chasing it, so hopefully that's brim. Yep. Oh! Bugger. That was a good bite. I missed it. I was working down the edge with the tide, but the wind coming upriver started to pick up. This can create a fairly difficult casting situation, with the wind blowing the fly line into you and requires a certain amount of care not to hook yourself. Casting with an oval cast, otherwise known as a Belgian cast or constant tension cast, helps somewhat in this situation. But as the wind picks up, it gets harder and harder to cast safely, let alone accurately. I could go down to the back of the boat and try to cast backhanded, but it's quite difficult to do that with the degree of accuracy required for this style of fishing. Fly is tail wrapped. Tail. We were just as far as retrieving it then, but something wasn't quite right. That's always a problem when you're trying to compensate for wind. end up overpowering your cast sometimes and tail wrapping things. One thing that you can do in this situation is try to shorten up your cast by getting a bit closer to the structure. Hopefully the added noise and turbidity from the wind offers a bit more cover for your presence. Short casts with a long leader though can be tough and it's easy for the wind to get hold of the fly and blow it into somewhere you don't want it, like the nearest tree.
Using a fly retriever like this one requires the utmost composure, poise and sheer coordination to pull it off smoothly. Only an expert should attempt a manoeuvre like this one. And keeping a cool head is critical. What an idiot. At least the next cast was a little bit better. Big, but he's feisty. Oh. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice little scrappy yellowfin brim. They go pretty hard, even at that size. He's not a big fish, but <laughs> he hit it pretty hard. <laughs> Every now and then I got a bit of a reprieve from the wind and was able to make a somewhat normal cast, but the windows of opportunity seem to be getting smaller. Still, it's worth remembering that the wind doesn't put the fish off. If anything, it gives them a bit more cover. Yep. <sighs> got some weight, this fish. It was a flatty. <laughs> it was a nice flatty. It's not a bad flathead. Get a quick measurement on him. He is 50, 53 centimetres. Nice, nice flatty. All right, let this guy go. That was a nice fish. I, uh, when I came up tight, I thought I had a snag at first. Can sometimes be the way with flatties. Just feel like a solid weight. But then it came alive. <laughs> well, I think I might call it today, guys. The wind is getting a bit uh, difficult making it a bit of a pain to fish so uh yeah not a bad day a few brim one really good one nice bloody um yeah not a bad start to the season all right hope you enjoyed that guys don't forget to subscribe and like and uh leave a comment and uh yeah see you next time